Kids Playground. Hooray! Hey, folks. What's up? Welcome back to the Darren Harris Podcast. Thank you for tuning in. It is episode 41 today. Yep. 41 episodes in the bag. Hmm. Today is going to be a little different. I've decided it's probably going to be different all the time. Now. I do not have any shout outs today. I don't have a dope shit award. I don't have any earbuds currently right now. I haven't really been listening to no music. I got a strain of the week, but probably not going to talk about it today either. Today, instead of talking about all that stuff, we're going to jump right into today's subject, which is to smash or not to smash. Are we going to get laid or not? Are we fucking on the first date? Having sex on the first date. That's what we're talking about today. Should you have sex on the first date? And what are the pros and cons if you do or don't have sex on the first date? That's what I'm talking about here today. And one of the reasons I'm talking about this today is because I got to thinking about my wife's relationship you know our relationship and I'll just go ahead and let the cat out the bag yeah it was on the straight up first date my wife and I we definitely we uh <laughs> wasted no time actually it not it, it didn't really go like that what actually happened is our first date she actually met all my best friends we went around and we hung out. We had a long day. It was like eight hours. We had eight hours of a day. We we went out. We went and did all kinds of crazy cool shit all day long. You know, we stopped by my friend Dave's house. When she came to the house to meet me, um, I wasn't even really dressed. I was kind of like bumming. And the night bef- you know, before she had come to my job, you know, we had, you know, met via social, not really social media, I guess a dating app. We actually met on a dating app, but, um, took us a while to really arrange a first date. We really didn't put together a first date for a while because I was really busy working. I worked at a, I was a manager at a jazz club and I was killing myself working, 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 working all the time. And I had just had an accident. Um, so I had, and I had put off the time that we were supposed to meet up. And it took about a good month for us to finally solidify some plans and say, all right, yeah, let's, let's go out. So we met up. We had a great day. Like I said, we tooled around. She came to the house, picked me up, tooled around for a little while. And, you know, then we went by and, my best friend and his wife, which is also another one of my best friends, had come up from uh, South Florida. And then we all went to see another one of my best friends. <laughs> and we did all this on our first date. So it wasn't like the whole, you know, me and you, you know, over dinner and candlelight. And it was a very unorthodox first date. You know, it was really just kind of like a day in the life of Darren Harris. So. The day went great, you know, and we ended up at a little pizza shop. It was a pizza shop. I had told her about uh, this soup that I really, I really enjoyed. I thought that she would like because she said that she was into seafood. So I took her and we got this soup and um, then we went out to the beach. (laughs) And uh, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so we didn't really waste no time. And then the cool thing about that was, is then it was the next day also. And then the day after that and the day after that, and it just kept being more and more days. And 
here we are today, and something happened because I got a ring on my finger, and she's got one on hers too now. So this is one instance that having sex on the first date actually didn't blow up in everybody's face. (laughs) As it does so many times, I think the statistic is like 46% of people have sex on the first date men men and women 46 percent that's a that's almost half the country that's almost half the people that go out and the reasoning is different from person to person of course but some of the reasons you know some of the reasons to me can be legitimate but some of them are kind of kind of silly I don't want to say silly because nobody's reasoning when it comes to having sex is really silly. But um, some of the reasons that people have sex, um, the well, the most the 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 main reason is I enjoy it. I, I want I enjoy having sex. I like to have sex, and it's no surprise nowadays. I know it was a big myth back in the fifties and sixties, but women like to you know they like to have sex just as much as men. Just as much, just as much, you know what I'm saying? I'm over here. I, you know, I got, you know, I got the sex Gestapo over here. She wants to to attack me like most days, but that's fine because I want to attack her most days. (laughs) So it really kind of does. It really, we, we do have a very healthy sex life and we figured that out right up front. You know, that was something that we figured out right up front. And thankfully for the, you know, for both of us, we actually both genuinely liked each other. You know, we really were looking to be in in a long-term committed relationship. That's what both of us were actually looking for. Unfortunately, a lot of people aren't really looking for that. You know, some people are looking for the opposite of that. You know, short-term, quick, fast, slam, bam, thank you, ma'am, or, you know, whatever it is and on to the next. And that, unfortunately that happens more times than not. And because of that, you have a lot of people that are out here, you know, fucked up psychologically. They have, you know, self-esteem issues. There's all kinds of shit that happens, but you know, well, let me get back to my list. Um, some people have said, they've said you can see if you're compatible sexually. Well, I mean, Okay, if you're, I mean, I think there's other ways to determine that. I think there's other ways to determine that. And part of that is, is really, truly and honestly and genuinely getting to know a person right up front. That's, I, I, I believe that. Um, some people have said, they want to see if people accept their level of freakiness or their level of nasty. Look, if you a freak, you a freak, whether or not you, you're going to be a freak. If you're a freak, you're going to be a freak. And if this person that you're with is not a freak, then you're not going to be with that person. And I don't think that's, you know, I mean, unless you're like, you know, breaking out firecrackers and stuffing them in your ass, I don't think anything you know, is too serious where you can't really talk about it or discuss it. You know what I'm saying? I mean, like, you know, I don't know when a correct time to introduce firecrackers in the ass to the bedroom is, but I think if you were going to do that, you might want to try to explain or talk about that prior to having sex. Hey, listen, you know, I really think you're, you're, you're really sexy and everything, but you know, I got this, this fetish that I like to, I like to have, uh, I like to stick firecrackers in your ass and, 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 and light them on fire and see how, if you could take the pain, you down with that girl, you, you, you want to get down with that. Now, every now and then you might get somebody that's like, all right, cool. But at least you talked about it. I mean, cause in dating a lot of times, like relationships fuck up because people don't, they're not really honest up front about like in the in the in the date in the first date they're not really honest you know what i mean people lie about all kinds of shit but, but if you were honest in the first date then at least you give that person an opportunity to make a a, a decision like if you went on a date and you're like hi my, you know my name's Darren you know i'm a, i'm a cancer you know i enjoy biking i like to cook 
you know, I go camping a lot. Um, uh, my favorite movies include Star Wars. I like The Matrix and Up That Ass number 57. Then people can really only respect that. She might slap you, but she can she can only respect the fact that you told the truth and and vice versa. And besides, that gives her an opportunity to say, well, I like Coke bottle Cox for or whatever it is. You give each other an opportunity to to at least find out what you like. So all that, you know, jumping in the sack to to test out whether or not, you know, we are sexually, you know, you like my level of freakiness. That's that's bullshit, because I, I'll tell you what. You'll be surprised what the fuck you'll do for somebody you really like. I mean, somebody you really, really like. I mean, you'll be fucking shocked. I mean, really, really, really. So cut that shit out. So um, people have also said it calms my nerves. Or like, really, it calms your nerves to, to on some sex on the first date. I make, you know, I mean, if you if if that's what it is, then you might need to, to see like somebody professionally before you even think to go out on dates if you nervous and this is how you calm your nerves on the first date you know what i mean so i mean unless that's who you are i mean sometimes that's who people are you know what i'm saying sometimes that is exactly who these people are as i will go out and fuck everybody that's some people you know some people men and women will go out and fuck absolutely anybody for any reason at any time you know, sometimes it doesn't even have to be a fucking date. It could just, I mean, sometimes, I mean, there's plenty of people who've had their relationships. We've all been there. We've had relationships where it's just, you know, you come over to the house for, you know, 45 minutes, an hour. And after you've done peace, you know, I got other shit to do. And so do you, you know what I mean? So, you know, it all, it always gets there, but I'm talking about on the level of actually trying to actually date somebody. I want to, I want to maybe try to come out of this with a meaningful relationship and, Sometimes it works. I mean, I'm I'm living proof of that. I'm living proof. I'm living proof of a couple of things, a couple of things that get bashed up by everybody. Online dating and sex on the first date. Um, I did both and I'm married to that person. And it just happened to be the right chemistry. But people search high and low for that type of chemistry. But we knew right off the bat that there was an enormous amount of chemistry chemistry not only sexually but but emotionally psychologically there was a lot of different components because we did we spoke on the phone uh maybe two or three times before we actually met in person and decided to go on this date which actually helped a lot because we were able to cover a lot of things that might make people uncomfortable on a first date so when we went and sat down someplace or when we went to my friend's house the only thing that she was really uncomfortable with which was really nothing because she blended in right away was the fact that here we are on my first date with this guy and he's taking me to meet his best friends already. Really? I thought we would, you know, maybe sit around and, and have dinner or that, but no, come over early in the day because I want to make a day out of it. And that was one of the things. And she said, I asked her, I said, well, what do you, what do you expect? What do you want? And she said, all I want is your time. All I requires your time. I was like, shit, that's all you want is time. Cause I got plenty of that for you and that's what it was is I wanted to make time and like I said before we were both at the point where we wanted something that was monogamous something that was committed something that was real and genuine and it just so happened that it happened to be so real and so genuine so quickly that yeah we decided that we was going to get down on the first date I mean it was like it was it was instant it was instant magic and that's what it was. And that's what I chalk it up to. And that's what I call it every day. Instant magic. Now, that's like I said, that's rare. Instant magic is rare. But people that doesn't stop people from going out and find it out. But there's a lot of fucking shit that you shouldn't do. I mean, there's a lot of things that people don't want to do. The reason why people don't do that shit. And, you know, one of them, the first one, the first one always is, is I'm not comfortable. I'm not comfortable with that. I'm, I'm not comfortable. I don't really know you. Um, um, people, I don't, I don't believe in doing that. Um, I need to have an emotional connection with the person I have sex with. Um, and the biggest thing probably that people overlook, a lot of people don't, but they still, they, they do though. They do completely overlook this, which is STDs and pregnancy. People overlook the shit out of that. And if you say you don't, you're full of fucking shit because there's plenty of us, all of us. If you say you haven't had unprotected sex with somebody, you're a fucking liar. And you have, and some of us have actually had unprotected sex with 
people who have we've had one night stands with, people we've never seen before, people that we've gone on first dates with. Some people have ended up pregnant. Some people have ended up with fucking uh, uh, HIV and all kinds of other uh, STDs. This happens. This is happening. It's not that it happens. It always happens. It happens every day. This shit happens every day, and we live in a society that some at some point, and I'm not some sort of conservative, sometimes I believe that we might be a little overly promiscuous. We might be a little too easy. We might be giving it up a little too easily. You know, we got a lot of fetishes that, you know, there's a lot of disorder in this country, by the way. You know, there's a lot of, you know, like craziness in this country as far as, as I mean, there's, there's sexual, more sexual predators in the United States than anywhere else in the fucking world. There's, um, uh, we got crazy human trafficking. Um, and all of this stuff, all this stuff is based in sex, you know, all the way down to dating is based in sex. Because at the end of the day, we don't date somebody to be their fucking friend. Yeah, I want to go on. I, I want to really be your friend. No, we date somebody in the hopes that eventually one day that we'll be intimate with this person, which that's the goal of most dating scenarios. You know what I'm saying? That is the ultimate goal to have an intimate relationship with somebody and to feel needed and to feel loved and to feel desired. And that's what we all want. And that makes us feel good. But some people are addicted to these feelings and you get people who will, like I said, sleep with anybody anytime for any reason. You know what I'm saying? They have low self-esteem. They want to feel loved. They want to feel needed. You know, a lot of these people, sometimes they, they, they find solace in porn. You know, they 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 want to they they go and make porn videos or want to do porn and, you know, watch an exorbitant amount of porn. You know, I mean, like, you know, there now there are people who watch porn, you know, that, you know, can just watch porn and use it for what it's for, which is, you know, an aid to, you know, help you and your friend you get off if you want to or, you know, or yourself. But. You know, there's some people who are, you know, who have, you know, addictions to it and also not only addictions to that, but addictions to going out, sleeping with people and ghosting them, you know, and just sleeping with one or fear of commitment. But they want the connection, but they have fear of commitment. They really don't want to commit. So they'll go on a date so that they get in maybe in hopes get laid, you know, which, OK, <laughs> that's what we're all going on this date for. But sometimes it's not based or rooted in in healthy behavior you know so i got more notes and uh, if you hear the pages ruffling it's because i actually do research on the shit that i i write about now some people say okay d what are what are some of the pros and cons because there are there to every everything there's always pros and cons to everything okay so here are some of the pros and cons of Sex on the first, have, having sex on the first date. The first one is a pro. The first, number one, the first pro is you get laid. You you actually get laid. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's that's pro number one is you get to you get laid and have an orgasm. A con to that is is you don't really know this person. You know what I mean? Think about that for just a minute. You know what I mean? I know we go out there, we're having fun, we we fall into things, and, but we really don't know this person that we're sleeping with on the first day. I just met you a few hours ago. I'm, uh, uh, I met you one time, you know, you know, or, you know, maybe we met in a different setting where I do know you, but you know, I don't know much about you. You still don't know this person really. You know what I'm saying? Not unless, like I said, it's some, you know, some motherfucker who's been chasing you around the office for three years or some shit like that, you know, stalking you. And then that's a red flag too. But, um, but yeah, it gets down to the your, the unfamiliarity. It's always awkward too. So um, you can see if you're compatible, and that's true. You can all, you can definitely see if you're sexually compatible if you have sex with this person on the first date. And you can, but um, doing shit like this could cloud your judgment. You know, you have sex. I mean, I know this happens a lot. People have sex on the first date, and automatically they think they're in a relationship with somebody, and the other person's like, "I don't know what the fuck you're talking about." And people end up getting their feelings hurt. And the next thing you know, this person is ghosted. And now their self-esteem is through the floor. So, um, sleeping with each other on the first date could lead to more dates. But it also could lead to an STD. <laughs> you know, it was wonderful. It could have been, but it could also be fucking terrible. 
It could lead to long-term relationships, or it could lead to you never seeing this person again. It could boost your confidence, or it could lower your self-esteem. It could be awesome, or it could be awkward. This person doesn't judge you. You know, this, that's a pro. This person could not judge you. Or they could think you're a complete hoe or player. Or they could they just think that, you know, or they, you know, they just think terrible shit about you. A good pro to it is someone actually likes you. And a con to it is somebody could actually be using you. Yeah, <laughs> they could be actually using you. And you too, fellas. Chicks use motherfuckers too. And they could be stalkers. They could be a stalker also. Um, but I think one of the most overlooked pro is you are trusted. That person trusts you enough with their body to be intimate with you so quickly. They, there must be something, you know, that they trust about you. You are trusted. So, and, uh, but the con to that is, is it could be a habit. You know what I'm saying? This could be a habit for this person. They could be charismatic enough to get you in a sack, and then all of a sudden they're fucking out on you. It's happened to everybody, males and females, men and women. So, um, And also, oh, yeah, 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 keep this in mind too. Anybody who says they usually don't do this or they're different, usually they do that shit all the time or they're exactly like everybody else. So don't fall for that shit either. You know, and, you know, sometimes I think, I think it's good to hold out, you know, sometimes, I mean, I I do, I really do. I think it's good to hold out now, even though I didn't with my wife, you know, it took a while. I mean, as soon as we met each other in person, it was on and popping, but I do think it's, it's good to hold out in certain situations for the respect of, you know, you build tension, you know, you build that sexual tension, you build that curiosity, you build that, that that intrigue that mysteriousness that 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 want you build that the more you say no nah, i'm good oh it's all right i'm good da, 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 da. you know what nice to meet you but i'm gonna just drop you off right here mom you know what i'm saying you build that but don't do that shit too much because you get put in the friend zone real fast because you they think you're moving too slow and they want to move a little bit faster than that and beware of that too motherfuckers are moving too fast you know what i'm saying because that shit right there is a red flag also so um but it, it is sometimes sometimes how people cope with things, how people cope or 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 if I can go out on a date every now and then and get late every now and then, I, that'll sustain me or tide me over to the next, you know, few months, you know, because I don't really want to, you know, because people, they'll do that also. They sabotage themselves in relationships. Um, some people, like I said, have an addiction to it. Some people fuck on the first date. I mean, fuck on first sight. Fuck a first date. Some people fuck on first sight. People always talking about, tr- you know, trust, you know trust issues you know but i mean it's crazy to me how i mean how people will throw trust issues up it's so funny to me because some people won't trust you to walk their dog but will suck a complete stranger's dick you know what i'm saying i mean like i don't know this one i just met this lady 15 minutes ago but i will eat her whole ass every night for the rest of her life you know what i'm saying and 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 that's what it is. Same thing with, uh, could be said about a fucking germaphobe too. Oh, I have germaphobe, but you know, stick a dick right down your throat. But that that's another podcast. <laughs> but um, when when there are a lot of these 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 issues present, like people use them to cope, people have an addiction. Um, this makes it easy when you get into relationship with people for people to cheat. It makes it very easy for people to cheat, and I don't think. I don't think that's, I don't think rushing is healthy. You know what I mean? Whew, I got lucky, but in the past I haven't been so lucky. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and I'm sure a lot of you haven't either. And she wasn't either. You know what I'm saying? We've all been there. We've all been right there. We've all done and been on both sides where we just wanted something for right now, or we were expecting something different and got something completely different. We've all been on both sides of the spectrum. If you say you haven't been, you're a liar. So, Sometimes I think it's 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 okay to have sex on the first date, but it's never okay not to use your brain. Use your brain. Use your better judgment, you know? Use your better judgment when 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 doing things like this. Rarely does it end up in long I think 5% of people who sleep with you end up in long-term relationships. I'm one of the 5%. But I guess at the end of the day it's this. If it makes you happy, 
if it makes you happy, I didn't prepare to sing, but <laughs> if it makes you happy, then, I mean, then knock yourself out. Do you, boo-boo. You know, if it, if it makes you happy, you know, you want to go out there and get your freak on and, you know, get your squirt on, you know, hey, you know what I mean? You know, go out and get your skeet on, homie. You know what I mean? So don't, but don't hide shit. Don't, be honest, bro. You know what I'm saying? Be honest with your with, with with what you expect from this person. If you if you're not looking for something long term, then I think this person really needs to make. I mean, you need to make that clear to this person so that they can make the decision whether or not to keep fucking with you or not. Or maybe they might be like, "Cool, I'm cool with that too," and it turns into that type of relationship. You know what I'm saying? Be clear. Be truthful with yourself. Be truthful with that other person that you want to date with. And I like to kind of get that shit right out of the right out of the way right up front. Me and my wife talked about all kinds of shit right up front. Both of us. Both of us talked about all kinds of shit. You know what I'm saying? Right up front. You know, and there it is. Out on the table. You know, and the part and like I said, it made it easily. You know, and ultimately it comes down to desire. You know, what 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 do you want to do? You know, what I mean, everybody's everybody's everybody wants to feel needed and desired. Everybody wants to have, be that that it person for somebody everybody does it's a human thing it's a it's a thing that we all come with and there's nothing wrong with that but there's also nothing wrong with making a motherfucker work for it a little bit you know what i'm saying making a motherfucker be worthy of it you know what i'm saying it's crazy like i said you know people with you know trusted issues you know just don't be trusting you know somebody you can't don't don't trust a motherfucker to walk, just walk your dog, but don't trust a motherfucker to eat your pussy on the first date too. You know what I'm saying? Wait a minute, hold it a second. You know what I mean? If that, unless it's what you really want to do, like I keep saying. But some people don't expect don't expect respect after that. That's the problem. A lot of people, and I think my wife was was surprised. I mean, because I I I was like, yo. This is a no judgment zone. I don't judge nobody. I mean, if this is what you wanted to do, you know, hey, I'm not going to pass no judgment on you. You know, I don't care what you did before. Are you with me? You know, this is me. This is me and you. I don't know who was previous and you you don't know who was previous. So, and that's the thing. And what we decided to do is from this day forward, we would do us. And in that, you know, once she felt comfortable enough to, you know, she didn't feel like I was on some like ghostly motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? Then, you know, it got our relationship got even better and better and better. And we opened up to each other even more and it became more than just, you know, and it didn't really start as a physical relationship because it was it was very it was a very, very healthy relationship to start right off the beginning, even from talking on the phone. Very healthy conversation. So I knew that there was a, a great amount of chemistry there. So I kind of had a head start. You know what I'm saying? So, um, um, man. Let me get back to to my notes, kind of tangenting off a little bit. But um, you never want to go out and have sex on the first date for these reasons. You never want to be naive. You never want to be too trusting. You never want to be easily manipulated. And please, 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 you never want to be a drunk. That's, to me, for me, A number one, numero uno. I don't give a fuck how fine you are. If you're drunk, you, you, you can miss me because I don't, I, don't, I don't want chicks like that because I know if, if, if you're drunk and fuck with me, it's just a matter of time before you come back and say, oh, I was drunk and it was a mistake, and I don't, I don't deal with that. That's happened already a couple times, and I'm not, I'm not dealing with that. So, oh, and by the way, fellas, you know how you're going to get laid on the first date? This is how you know. This is now. Listen to what I'm about to tell you. You know how you know that you're gonna get laid on the first date. If she have, if she has more than two cocktails, there's a strong possibility that you might get laid. And, I mean, you don't even have to be cute. You just have to be funny. I mean, and really, funny plus three cocktails equals some pussy in a lot of cases. For real, depending on how many you know cocktails she had will determine where you get laid. If she's had six drinks or more, five or six drinks, then behind the dumpster will do just fine. 
Now, also keep this in mind as well. If she's drinking wine, then she wants to maybe be in love. She's romantic. But if she's drinking tequila, she don't want to remember shit. And if she's drinking rum, that means not only does she not want to remember shit, she want to forget everything, but she wants to throw up all the contents from her stomach from the night before. So keep that in mind when you out with somebody and she's drinking a lot and I have a, a bunch of rules for dating. Maybe I'll go over them one day. I got a bunch of, I call them lessons. And one of them is a couple of things. These are rules, lessons for dating. Okay. These are two real ass lessons for dating ladies. All right. This is for ladies. Beware of the dude that buys all the drinks. Okay. If he's just buying drink after drink and feeding you drink after drink, beware of that motherfucker. Okay. And also, fellas, beware of the chick drinking all the drinks. For real. Beware of her. Because not for nothing, a lot of times these bitches will fuck anybody and you'll fucking go home with, a, with this bitch and have some sort of STD in the morning. For real. Both ways. Be careful. Be fucking careful. Now, that's just a little gem I'm going to drop on y'all. I get, I, you know... I, I got a, I got, listen, I got another one for you. I'm sorry I was drunk is not an excuse. In a, in a monogamous, uh, committed relationship, I'm sorry I was drunk is not an excuse. But if you, if you get down with somebody who is like that, then you are setting yourself up for that. So if that's what you want, then cool. I mean, that's what you want. But if that's not what you want, then be very clear with the person, not, not, not the person, be very clear with yourself right up front that this is not the type of person that I want to waste my time with because I'm looking for something different. Now, if I want to just get my dick sucked, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, get some ass or whatever, you know, then, then I don't care. You know what I mean? But even still, and for me in that scenario, I don't, even if it is that, that's not what I want. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I don't a lot. A lot of the problem is, is people just look at, at each other as objects, men and women, just look at each other as objects. And, and I try my damnedest, you know, being brought up the way that I was to not look at people like that. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to look at people as objects because people are real people just like me. I want them to consider my feelings and as I'm sure they want their feelings considered as well. So even if it is on some, you know, slam, bam, thank you, ma'am, some one night stand shit, some booty call shit or whatever, I at least want to respect that person you know what i mean and not only respect that but respect the fact that this person you know shared their their you know shared intimacy you know what i mean and that that is a big deal to a lot of people and a lot of unfortunately a lot of people so many times they take that for granted and they end up throwing shit and people can I mean, really people commit suicide over all kinds of shit like this you know somebody that they liked and decided that they had sex with this person this person ghosted them and they made them feel like you know bullshit uh, uh, and they end up fucking committing suicide you know what i'm saying and, and we 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 want to minimize that. So I guess at the end of the day, this is really what I'm getting at. Pick and choose your relationships. You know what I'm saying? Pick and choose the relationship with the person that you want. Design and tailor your relationship to the way that you want it. If you want a drunk, go get you a fucking drunk. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? If you want somebody from the hood, then go get you somebody from the hood. You know what I'm saying? If you want somebody to have three girlfriends with, then find you somebody that will have three girlfriends with you. You know what I'm saying? Be honest. You know what I'm saying? But one thing you should be honest about right up front is who you are and what your expectations are. You know what I'm saying? If you fall into it, and chances are, fellas, if you shut the fuck up, if you shut the fuck up, a lot of times, chances are, You'll get laid anyway, just because you, you shut the fuck up. You you cool. You know what I'm saying? You're 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 good. But if you flamboyant and boisterous, it's not. That's just not gonna last long. It's gonna play itself out. You know what I'm saying? Especially if it's not genuine. So be genuine, and um, good things will come to you. So, well, maybe this is a a subject that I'll revisit here soon. Because I think that um, a lot of people still have curiosities and questions about it. And I'm still going to continue to do research on it. I think there should be better relationships made out there, not just physical ones. We need to start treating each other better. You know, we need to stop giving it up so easy. You know, there are other other sexually forward countries that don't have the sexually dysfunctional problems that the United States has. 
You know what I'm saying? But a lot of sexual activity can be healthy. I mean, it really is. Sexual activity can be healthy, man. It really is. My, my wife, as a matter of fact, she is studying now to become a relationship and dating coach, you know, to have, you know, not only just healthier sex practices, but healthier relationship practices. You know, and that right there is a big thing. You know, healthier relationship practices make for healthy relationships. Healthy relationships make for better society. Think about it. So I think that is going to do it for this week's episode of the Darren Harris podcast. And um, yeah, we're going to maybe talk about this maybe next week, maybe in the, in the weeks to come. But I really would like to really revisit this topic because, like I said, so many people kind of they swim around this this minutia or they swim around this whole this whole universe we call dating, this whole hodgepodge of bullshit that we call dating in this country. And we don't know what to make sense of. Should we, should we not, you know, is it good? Is it bad? Is it healthy? Is it unhealthy? You know, and it really, it, it really, it really has intrigued me and, and, you know, maybe really to kind of want to get down to me. I, me personally, I think my wife and I have a very healthy relationship, um, but I could be wrong. And, one of the reasons I am pursuing this is to find out if there is any kind of dysfunction. I know that we can't leave the house a lot of times. We don't leave the house. We don't get shit done. I know that happens a lot. We we put shit off, you know, so we can go do other things with each other, <laughs> um, if you get what I'm saying. But I know that that's kind of that can be kind of dysfunctional. I mean, it's almost like we have a super high addiction to each other and, you know, People say sometimes when relationships are like that, they fizzle out, but I can't see that happening and neither can she. And that's where we're at right now. But, you know, one of the reasons I do the relationship goals on my podcast is to prevent that from happening. And one of the reasons I do the relationship goals goals on my podcast is to to keep this relationship the way that it is, to keep everything, everything that's in place in my relationship, I would like for it to grow exponentially i would love for everything to grow you know and it's it's doing man it's growing like a fucking weed right now so if you're out there and you're thinking you know am i a bad person for having sex with this dude on the first date no you're not if you're out there thinking you know am i a bad person because i went out and had sex with this girl on the first date you're not So don't judge yourself. Don't beat yourself up. Don't hold yourself. If you wanted to do it, you wanted to do it. Stand up in it. Now, if you were manipulated it into into it, then that's a different story and that's a different podcast. But if you want to do it, you're a grown-ass adult. Make your own decisions. Until next week, folks. My name's Darren Harris. This has been the Darren Harris Podcast. Oh, yeah. I want to thank some people. <laughs> I want to thank my wife right off the bat for allowing me to talk about our sex life. <laughs> but then I want to also I want to thank my best friend for uh, encouraging me to do my podcast. I want to thank my producer and owner of the station, Gentry Thomas, for giving me the forum uh, to do my podcast. I want to thank all of you, my listeners, who are listening in some of the other countries that people are listening from. Um, hey, y'all, what's happening wherever you guys are at? I just got told that I had some uh, some listeners in some other countries. So Darren Harris is going global, everybody. So hopefully I can keep it going. Um, hopefully uh, uh, you guys will continue to find my content entertaining and like and share with your friends. Share it. Share it. Pass it around. Share it. Talk about it. Talk at, at the water cool about it. DM me, man. Get at me. Get at me. I want to have some interaction with y'all, man. Get at me. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, I'm having fun. I'm starting to feel like I'm, I'm, I'm doing this right. Like I'm trying to get all the kinks out. I feel like slowly but surely things are coming to me and I want to have some interaction with my audience. So if you guys are up for it, man, DM me, shoot me some targets, some topics. We could do whatever you want. We could talk about whatever you want. I thank you guys in advance for everything that you have done, everything that you've said, all your support that you've given me and all the support that you will continue to give me. 
And also check out, like I said, we got, you know, we got the Outcast podcast. I think the Mr. Wendy show just went back up. Um, um, we got we got Dirty Blind with Bridget B. We got the SBK show. Come on, y'all. We got a lot. We got a we got a dope line of a podcast. So if you guys are up to it, man, check everybody out. Check this platform out. We are trying to do the best. Gentry, I know, is doing a, a bang up job trying to give the best content he can give. I mean, you can also even if podcasting is your thing, you turn into Shaq Fu Radio or either or either Muddy Country if hip hop ain't your thing. Shaq Fu for hip hop and R and B, and we got Muddy Country for for uh, people who like uh, country music. So get down with us, man. We got a really really good platform, and I do again once again thank everybody for joining me. And uh, we'll see you next week on the Darren Harris Podcast. I appreciate you all. Peace.